Welcome to the shooting show, brought to you this week from the British shooting show, the NEC, Birmingham. But more about that in the news later. First up, we're game shooting with Jeff Garrett at Rickling Hall. We join Jeff at Rickling Hall's shoot. The day is set for good weather and the banter should be savage but enjoyable. <laughs> the pegs are drawn using numbered shot cups. Always a tense moment as the guns find out who will be their neighbours. No, there is a sweep for the total bag and there's also a prize on offer for whoever shoots the last vermin of the day. The rules for this are rather stringent but rely on a good measure of trust. No, there's no choice for you got to be. Yeah, no choice for you got to be. I will, I'll put it in in a moment. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And the last try, yeah. one shot at the... Drop game first, none of this sniping yeah. after a J, he was over around there. Well, no, the initial <laughs> I was within the rules. Yeah, you were, but Jim's rules were wrong. So it's the last. The last Burby. Last Burby. Last Burby shot. It could be shot the first drive if no one ever shoots it. That's the last Burby shot, yeah. Not before a shot of game. Picked up by your own dog. Um, welcome to Rickling, last shoot. There'll be no limit on the bag. We may get 50, we may get 150. If it flies in a safe shooter, if you're happy to shoot it, by all means do. Um, no woodcock, no grey partridges if you can, live at your peg, no ground game whatsoever. No ducks at Rickland, you can at Charleville if there's some come out there. And that's about it, I think, isn't it? I'm going to have a drink. On the bottom of the glasses. Is that a fire? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Either Zenith 28 gram, 5 shot, felt wad, that's what we'll be using today. Lovely game cartridge. The guns take their chance to unleash their very own presenting skills. Not quite as good as me, but hey. <laughs> Welcome to the shooting show. <laughs> I'll tell you what we ought to do. We ought to have a, have a competition here. Who can beat Kai? Everyone's got to do one. <laughs> <laughs> All together now. <laughs> Welcome to the shooting show. <laughs> I'll just do a bit of a lining out for the first drive. Jeff will be given a pair of aim cam glasses a try, hopefully capturing some down the rib footage. The first job is to ensure the camera is correctly aligned to follow Jeff's point of aim. Just had a draw, uh, I've just drawn number five peg and the first drive is pond lay. So 
we've just been on the peg first birds come out come straight over the hedge I've killed that nicely so good start for me and let's hope it continues uh, what what we do here um, we have a five or a gun for the last vermin winged vermin pigeon jay magpie to be shot on the day so you can shoot one on the first drive but if you shoot one on the last drive and it's the last one that's who's going to win the money so a bit of bit of fun bit of banter you know but it just uh, you know adds to the enjoyment of the day so weather conditions we've got a nice overclassed day a little bit of breeze coming from the probably southwest which is good um, and we're just here to have a good day Well that's a good start to the day for Bernard, uh, I've been shooting here quite a few years now and that has got to be the best I've seen Pond Lake go, some of them birds were just absolutely fantastic, beat me hands down, there was three there, beat me well and truly, did kill I think half a dozen, some good ones, uh, but I'm afraid the best ones carried on, so a good start to the day for Bernard, mediocre start to the day for me, but uh, let's hope it continues like that for Bernard. Good boy, good boy. Here, 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 here. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Go get back. Lovely. Sit, 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 sit down, sit down. Well, I didn't see that because mine said all the wheels fell off here, Russell. Right? You nearly well, shot one over my head, didn't you? you? you oh, look at that white long back on. I was about to pull the trigger and it cut through it. With all the game stirred and all the guns and beaters on board, the game truck arrives at the next drive.
the second drive is called Hawksley. Um, got the release pen in the wood behind. Nice bit of game cover out there. And again, you know, the, the conditions today with the nice wind, uh, overcast day, birds are flying really well. Um, the big flush to start with, they sort of went to the right of me. Then I had a few coming over the back, which was good. Um, but I think, you know, everyone had a nice bit of shooting there. So it's a good drive, good second drive. Uh, now we're just off for a little bit of refreshments uh, before we move on to the third drive. Now it's time for a flying pit stop to unload and hang the first of the shot birds and a quick drink and snack before getting straight out to the next drive. Yeah. Find it. <laughs> Jeff's dog's now just bringing the cover down for us. <laughs> bringing the birds to us. Yeah, saves us doing it. That might work in our favour, the dog coming down the cover. <laughs> yeah, but we weren't <laughs> yeah, giving yeah, glasses yeah. to your dog at so where you are then, Jeff. <laughs> 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 we set the dog up that in. <laughs> This drive's called Shardwell 1. Just got a piece of cover, goes up to a little pond, and we just literally walk it up. Uh, a lot of the birds will obviously go forward, but we'll just get the odd one or two coming back. Um, always good for 30, 40 birds in the drive. Uh, it's all depending whether we're, we can get them over the guns. And you're walking and yeah, I'm number nine, so I'm just walking up behind the beaters, 30, 40 yards behind the beaters, and just catching anything that comes back. Shard wheel one finished. Um, this time of year, there's about a dozen, 15, uh, maybe 20 birds in there. Some of them flew okay, but that's just the nature of this drive. So for that particular drive, that was a good drive. In the end, didn't it? That was a good shot, though, was it? Yeah. Hey, mate, have a job. Oh, that's a pub. Oh, is it? All oh, right, yeah. <laughs> After a quick gather up, we're straight into the next drive. George, get back. 
nice drive, got picked up three. Just got to go and have a look at another for another hen bird just at the back here. So have a little wander and see whether we can pick it up. Good boy, good boy, good boy, good boy, good boy, Richard, come on, here, good boy, come on, George. George proves his worth with a tax and retrieve, come on. before the guns have a spot good of boy. lunch and a sit down. Good boy, here, good boy, good boy, good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. The last few drives of the day see a little tension creep in. A qualifying wind vermin has been bagged and further vermin shot could be the prize winner. Yeah, this first drive after this drive's called Petticoats. Uh, they normally take it uh, the other direction, but today they brought it back. Got the stops in the corner of the wood. Birds have come out, fanned out all over the guns, which was nice. Mr. Potter had four very nice birds there, shot very well. Um, yeah, it's a good drive, nice drive after lunch. And now we're just heading off for the last drive of the day. So at the moment that's the last vermin shot, is it? Yes. At the moment, yeah. Oh, but hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. After hang on. a game bird or no game bird shot. <laughs> Void. <laughs> right, crack on it. Don't worry. It doesn't count until you get on your pig. Which is in the middle of the paddock. <laughs> that, 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 that can't be right because we, we're not allowed to get on our pegs before yeah. wait. Until the shot go. I'll let you know when you're on your peg. <laughs> <laughs> I'll blow the whistle. <laughs> you got to be in the paddock. Yeah, whistle. <laughs> no, I think you, what it's got to be, it's got to be the first game bird shot. Yes, same bird yeah, right shot. Doesn't matter where you are, as long as there's a bit of game bird shot. shot. I think eight and nine have got to be in the paddock no. as well. With them. If I didn't know better, I think Jeff is trying to get into prime vermin position. Surely not. George, come here. A magpie and a pheasant down. This could be a close one. Hey, mate. Jeff rounds off proceedings with a crack in left and right. Get back, get back. Good boy. 
George. We'll be back. Good boy. Sit, sit, sit. Sit, 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 sit. Go on, back. The winner of the Vermin Sweep is announced and Julie pledges the money to charity. I've had some very, some great fun here and it's been always very, very competitive. <laughs> In fact, too competitive, I just sweated a bit then. But no. <laughs> so I'd just like to say it's been a pleasure to come up here and shoot at Ricklin Hall. I know things have moved on and I'd just like everybody to say thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's another day finished. Um, we've uh, finished up with just over 150, which I must say uh, has been an absolutely fantastic day. Uh, weather was very kind to us, and the birds flew superb on it. And I've been coming here for quite a few years now as a guest of Bernard, and I've got to say this, this today rates as one of the top days that I've had here. It just flew the company, the way the birds have flown today, and the crack you know, at the end of the day there, about the last vermin with Mr. Watson, thought he'd lost it, and then he'd come on that uh, uh, that he had won it. And his... Just explain the rule there. Uh, the rule basically was, um, you couldn't claim the bird unless there'd been a game bird shot on the drive. So you had to be on the drive, game bird shot, and then if you shot a vermin after that, it qualified. And on the last drive, I shot a magpie, and being the honest person that I am, um, I did have to say that it was before any game bird and Michael's face was a picture. But all in all, you know, I'd like to thank this gentleman. You know, he's provided a huge amount of sport up here for quite a few years. And today, I think it's been one of the better days. Bernard. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much. You have been very pleased with the day. Good last day of the season. Well, for the, for the main days, we'll have a beatest day. But yeah, record day, in fact. Very pleased. Jeff there, catching all the cool footage on the aim cam. And now, it's the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News, reporting on location from the British Shooting Show 2018. Moving to the NEC for the first time ever, the show grew in scale and ambition, providing a real showcase for the shooting sports. Just about every major brand was there, and so were we, finding out how people felt about the show and sniffing out some product news at the same time. In many ways, rifles were the star of the show. First, Mauser unveiled its M18 rifle. Mauser is so normally associated with being the 98. Actually, now it's gone back to the root of what a Mauser is. Ultimate reliability, rugged, um, all the features that you expect from a rifle, and they've done it in a really, really attractive price point. A cold hammer forge barrel, a very good trigger, adjustable. We've got a three position safety system. What does it for me, they actually managed to put a a synthetic stock together that has got these soft inlays here. It is pleasingly boring. I say that definitely because sometimes I find boring is good because there's not much that can actually go wrong. So it's a little bit like when you're buying a car, you don't any need any fancy features. You just want something that gets you there. Again, with the Mauser, you've got a great brand name that says this is going to work and it's going to not give you any grief. And again, sometimes I think boring is good. It does what it says on the tin. Well, we brought them in the, the standard 243 and 308, but if you go onto the Mauser website, you will find the usual suspects there. 30 or 6, they're coming out. 270, 65 Creedmoor, that's gathering pace in the United States. Also, the rifle is also aimed at a US audience, so 65 Creedmoor shouldn't go amiss. Um, so the usual suspects are going to be there. Again, don't expect any frills, but that's a good thing. You're getting a good rifle that says 
this is going to work and you get it with that. It's made in Germany, made by Mauser. I think we're going to have, a, I think we've got a winner here. Not to be outdone, Remington had no fewer than six new models of 700 on display. Look, a wonderful range of Marlins that are behind us here today. We've got um, three panels, 20 odd models currently in the UK. Um, eagerly, the anticipated 1894 has been re-released in a couple of months time, chambered in a uh, very popular 35738 special and that gun will be available in five different platforms as of this year so fantastic news there and, and Remington themselves have also just launched, launched six new uh, rifles into the UK market for 2018 uh, so with those six there's another 19 in junction so 25 variations of a Model 700 uh, in the UK, most of them available in a minimum of three or four calibres, so fantastic, massive stable of guns, we've, we've got something that can appeal to most retail outlets and end users. Uh, Model 700 5R Gen 2 is the name of it, so one of the uh, yeah, hot new products for Remington uh, this year, mil-spec rifle, so designed around military use as well. Uh, main features of the gun are the 5R rifled barrel, so five lances as opposed to uh, traditional six lances if you like, less fouling, less bullet defamation. Uh, yeah, really, really good product, much easier to clean as well. Accuracy guaranteed gun, stainless barrel in action that's been Cerakoted in black, has the new style Remington tactical bolt knob on there that we'll see on the top few models from Remington this year. It's bedded in a HS Precision glass reinforced stock, um, BDL floor plate, so no end of uh, magazine conversion kits available for it too. Crosses over a few markets, the chambering we've picked here is 6.5 Creedmoor, it's also available in 308 and 300 Win Mag. 24 inch barrels and uh, yeah, just as uh, the varmint hunters, the long range guys, uh, target shooters, it, yeah, it really does uh, tick a number of goals for us and it's been a fantastic seller since it hit the shores recently. And Bagara grew its ever popular B14 range. This is the newest addition to the B14 range from Bagara. Uh, it's called the Ridge. The stock's based on the Hunter stock, similar ambidextrous stock with a different finish, more of a textured finish on the rifle. Uh, the features that differentiate this to the B14 are an oversized semi-weight uh, varmint barrel. The barrels vary in length on long action and short action, so 22 inch for short action, 24 inch for long action. A variety of calibres from 270 up to 300 wind mag. The same detachable box magazine option is available. Uh, flush fitting magazine in there. Another feature on this particular rifle is the oversized bolt handle. Instead of a standard rounded bolt handle, we've got the oversized uh, teardrop sort of handle on there. Um, the stock's actually ambidextrous, as is on the, the Hunter. And every other feature is pretty much the same. Great accuracy. Uh, perfect product again from Bagara. Moving over to shotguns, it was all about Browning. Its Liberty model caters to younger or lighter shooters, and if you're looking for a high-grade gun, the Royal is for you. This is the first of the new products for 2018. It's called the Liberty Light. Uh, most, uh, well, the Browning stock dimensions, the standard Browning stock dimensions suit most shooters off the peg. However, there are groups of people that don't conform to the standard stock dimensions. So, for instance, ladies. Uh, smaller gentlemen and junior shooters and this gun is designed particularly for those guys so much higher in the comb with this Monte Carlo stock uh, there's more cast on the gun as well and more toe um, it's a lightweight design uh, so it's an aluminium action with a steel reinforced breech so it's very strong where it needs to be strong but very light so it's easier to handle and more pointable and um, the radius if you notice on the the, the, the grip here we're much closer to the trigger, so it's ideal for people with smaller hands so they can get to the trigger more easily. And we're using a lightweight barrel with these extended chokes, as you can see. So if you want to go game shooting with it, you can take the chokes out, put some flush fit chokes in, or you can use it for clay shooting. And it's a very neutral engraving on there, as you can see. It's a lovely deep scroll engraving, so it appeals to, to lots of different people. And we're launching it this year. It should come into the shops around about April. Uh, and with a price tag of just under £2,000, so it's a, a really good price into the market as well. We have a UK designed and specific really to the UK uh, game gun, it's actually a 5 series gun, uh, so based on the traditional action. Um, it has the hallmarks of the old 325 grade 6, so uh, if you remember with the, with the gold bird inlay, what we've done is actually taken the gold away and 
replaced it with silver. So you've got this lovely tone on tone uh, appearance now, which is very, very classy. Um, it's a beautiful uh, traditional style gun with a solid top rib, six mil top rib. It's fixed choke for exceptional balance. But the key feature with this product is we've gone back to nominal bore. Now people say, why have you done that? Well, uh, fibre wad is now becoming almost mandatory at most game sheets. Uh, and there is a perception in the market that overboard barrels do not work as well with, with uh, fibre wad cartridges. So to get the maximum performance, we've gone back to a nominal bore. So we get a better pattern. Uh, we've tested this on the pattern plates and it works very, very well indeed. Uh, available in 20 and 12 gauge and uh, with a price tag of around £5,000. It's not confirmed yet, but around 5000 Available August, September this year. There was a star-studded display at the Ely Hawk stand as their celebrity ambassadors turned up to give their perspective on the show. I'm massively into shooting. Obviously, rugby's been a huge part of my life. When I'm away from rugby, shooting and obviously my family fill the other part. So it's nice to come down here, get away from the kids for, a, for an afternoon especially, but uh, no, just to come and see what the industry is doing, what's new on, on stands, what new guns were around, obviously see what Ely are doing in terms of innovation with the new cartridges, but you know, it's just nice to have a day out surrounded by guys who are interested in the same things. It's going to be a massive year for me, so I'm feeling really good at going into 2018. The training's going really well, we've got some big competitions this year, so I'm going to Commonwealth Games in the Gold Coast, which is amazing, I can't wait to get out there. We've got World Cups, World Championships, you name it, so it's a very hectic year, but so much exciting stuff to come. I'm on the job hunt, yeah, I'd love to be involved in, the, in this industry. Uh, in any sort of form, obviously ambassador for Ely and ambassador for Purdy. So something down that line would be great. Going from rugby, which was, was a hobby, to go to another hobby would be fantastic. Fly out to Commonwealth Games on the 1st of April and then my event is on the 8th of April. So give me some time to settle in, do some training, get the feel of it. But yeah, it should be a great event and I know the team itself is in really good form as well. And it's just great that we have such a great team spirit going on at the moment. We're all still in contact and getting ready for all our competitions together. So it's really nice to see. I love the Ely Zenith, you know, the crop-coated shot. I just, I love the look of the card. I love how it shoots. I love how it, you know, it, how it kills birds. And, um, you know, to be involved with Ely, you know, a, a brand which I've been aware of since I first started shooting to then have the chance to become an ambassador for them, obviously work, working with Amber as well. Um, it, again, it's just being involved with, with a company that I respect and I think produce the best cultures. It's sort of, it, it's a no-brainer really. Throughout the year, like, well, to be honest, since I started, Ely have been such a massive support and such a key element to my success, I feel, because they've just backed me since day one. They've allowed me to train as much as possible using fantastic quality cartridges. And to even to come out with the Amber by Ely cartridge is something I'm really passionate and excited about to hopefully influence girls into the sport, young people. And it's something which is just great fun and just shows that sport can be seen in a modern light but it's just great fun and that's what it should be about. And British firm Nightsight unveiled the latest evolution of its distinctive NV units. This is the new product from Nightsight, Nightsight Dark Ops. What Dark Ops means, uh, it's given the user the advantage to remain more covert. So we have stealth to the front and stealth to the back. Uh, if I can show you here, let me check the screen. Uh, we have the dimming screen now which allows you to dim the image down to remain more covert. We use 940 IR at the front, again to remain more covert. You have the RTAC technology camera, so you can record directly to your micro SD card. One touch button record, simple on and off. We also use the external focus, so you can make that image as crystal clear as you can. And again, using Night Sight's feature of added night vision. The, the price of the product is Viper Dark Ops starts at 499, Wolf Dark Ops 699, and Eagle Dark Ops 899. For many years, people have been using lamps to shoot. From lamps, we went to night vision, and from night vision, this is the next progression. Uh, more people are using 850 to hunt, this is 940, more covert. Um, I've seen it for myself that animals are more reactive to 850. They can't see the light, but they can see the, the red glow that illuminates from the head unit. 940 takes that away. It allows you to remain covert, and that's the whole point. To, to control the pests or predators that we have to 
using night vision, 940 is more effective for that job. That's all from the NEC. That was the Shooting Show News. That was the Shooting Show News. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been The Shooting Show. <laughs>